Guys, so welcome back to another episode of the wonderful Our City of ZSL podcast. It is another Corporate Finance Monday. So good to have you guys back here. And today is about huh, Polini. Okay, so Polini is a coffee manufacturer and retailer. You guys may have heard of it before. Now, they purchase and they roast coffee, okay? And of course, in which they sell throughout Europe. Now, the senior management team and uh, the plan, they're, they're planning basically the strategic objects or the objectives for the next year, right? So they're going to be about three discussions between Marcus, who's a CFO, and a team of analysts, right? And then after that, what we're going to do, we're going to listen to this, see how he talks. And then after that, we're going to think about the areas you think your company could improve and Again, from there, in terms of finance, customer, internal business processes, and learning and growth, just like I have last time had spoken to you about, right? So without further ado, let's listen to this audio first, and then we'll go from there. Try Here we go. If you got, this is going to be a longer one, so get Tell ready. Us, Kim. We did quite well overall, and customers are generally satisfied. That's great news. But are there any improvements we can make? Well, many customers think we don't provide the best cup of coffee out there. But they're generally happy with the quality against price. Are you saying we're seen as a bit of a budget brand? Mm, I think so, yeah. And improving the quality would allow us to charge more, which would help our operating profit. Do you mean our customers are prepared to pay higher prices? Yeah. The research suggests they would, but it'd have to be a new product range. That's very interesting. Was there anything else? Yes, actually. To support a premium price, it would be good to improve the retail experience. You know, modernize some of the coffee shops. Uh, We're getting a lot of feedback suggesting the interiors are a bit tired. Uh, if we improve that, we improve the general retail experience. And that will make it easier to charge higher prices. Okay, that's really interesting. Thanks, Kim. You know what? This is so important. This is so important. Listen, the experience is everything. If we look at business development, I've heard about this so much, the interior, the exterior. And if you look at coffee shops out here in Thailand, the consumer, they love picturesque coffee shops, right? This is how they're going to buy their coffee. They don't really care so much about the taste. They care about what it looks like on the outside and inside. Picturesque for Instagram. This is just how Thai people are. Now, me, I am a community type of guy. I am a guy that I look at customer journey. So let me give you a number of examples. I'm going to try to make this short. Under Armour, a brand I've been wearing the last 10 years and I love so much, is far better than Nike, that's number one. Number two, that's way off, the, that's totally irrelevant. But number two, when I went to the Under Armour store near my house, the lady didn't speak any English, but she said, I have a friend where you work who will have masks, Under Armour masks, for there this Tuesday. Do you want one? I can reserve one, 4 p.m., go. I said, see, that's customer satisfaction. Now, Under Armour is already that brand that I just love way more. I stopped wearing Nike a long time ago because if you look at those slave shops in China, it's terrible, right? That's number one. Number two, the shoes suck. Nike wear, the, Nike has terrible shoes. Those Nike shocks are some of the worst shoes I've had. They messed up my knee. Let's just put it that way. Anyways, let's focus. So going back to the experience, I actually had someone here at my job buy, you know, uh, buy that mask for me. They reserved one. And I'm like, see, this is what I love about customer satisfaction. Another good one is, uh, again, like an Italian restaurant. There are two of them that I really love. One has the best pizza. Two has the second best pizza. If you say Arsenio, which one would you like to go to more? The second one by far. Why? It's in a home. And it's not about, you know, the Italian, you know, there being an Italian chef and everything. It's the experience. Being in a homey area, going inside and it feel like walking, you're walking into a home and the lady knows you, everyone there knows you, it's prime time service, they're so wonderful. Now, although the pizza is the second best I've ever had, and it's about 
33% cheaper, the experience in its entirety, that pizza would taste better than the pizza that's more expensive, but you, you know, the, but it would taste better than the pizza that even tastes better and more expensive just because the experience behind it. That other place, the pizza is amazing, but the service sucks. It's hot. It's a great view, but you have to go with the right people. The, 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 the waitress in, the waiters, they just all, they're pretty bland. And so that's customer satisfaction, right? So let me give you another uh, last example. Gyms. The gym I used to go to out here in Bangkok in a place called Sathorn in the business district. <sighs> I know the CEO and the shareholder, and I've known them for three, four years. I used to always love going there because the energy, the music, the everything. It felt like we were the band of brothers. There was so much community there. However, when you go with housewives, they have a tendency of being topsy-turvy, meaning they like to change all of a sudden. One week, they'll be nice. The second week, they'll be in the same gym and they'll ignore the hell out of you. So over the past two months, there was another uh, specific individual. I believe this lady's from Vietnam. She's a trainer. See, the thing is, trainers out here, they have very high egos, especially if they have very gorgeous bodies. She brought, she completely threw off the dynamic of what had already existed, although she may not know, but she's very standoffish. So I went from being like at a pretty eight and nine with this gym, plummet into a two out of 10 in terms of satisfaction. So I decided to get class fast and I started going to other gyms. I went to a CrossFit gym on the other side of town, although it's on the other side of town, an additional 25 minutes away from the gym, from this gym that I just mentioned, I love it there because we're band of brothers. We all push each other to our limits. The people are real. The conversation is real. I love going there far better than I love going to this gym with the people I've known for the last three years. Let me give you another example. I went to another gym, another CrossFit gym. I walk in, terrible customer service. Gym nice, all the equipment, no music, great showers, shitty customer service. Will I ever go back there? If it's may if I could get in for open gym using only two of the points on my class pass, I will. But I'll never pay anything over four for that place because it's not worth it. Now, going back to the previous gym to hurry up and sum all this up before we continue listening. I went to that gym again today. And honestly, I've never been so thrown off before in my life. I walk in, the shareholder was like, oh, I thought you weren't coming today. Just make sure you book in. I said, excuse me? After three years of knowing you, you're set. I told you I was coming in today. Maybe it was a miscommunication, but do not tell me, oh, do this, do that. That is bullshit. That's number one. She said that right when I walked in, threw off the entire workout. The music sucked. The people sucked. They weren't hungry. They did. There was no energy. There was nothing exciting. There was no burn. The CEO didn't say hello. I didn't go in there with, with that, oh, I feel like I need attention mindset. But I went in there saying, you know what? Two years ago, you guys were a hungry startup gym. And now, where did that go? Where's your customer service? It went out the window. Talk to my friend today. I said, hey, I got about $50 left in that gym. I'm thinking about just saying, you know what? I'll never see you guys again. Don't have to tell them. Just make it up in my mind because they don't know and they're probably not aware of the energy. They're not aware of probably the bad service that they have. They're not aware of who they used to be, but they've become complacent. And when it comes to business, if you're not learning, and growing, and you don't give a damn about your customers, and your internal business processes have gone out the window, and I'm still paying a little bit of a premium as compared to another gym that I pay way less, and it's fucking fun, that's the end. And so it's so important to know interior, customer satisfaction, customer journey, not about the food, it's about the entire thing. It's about it all. One little slip up could cost everything. And this is what I'm so scared of (laughs) going to Phuket at the end of next month, because I know 
me and my friend, we got this 60 government, 60, 40 government deal out here in Thailand. So the government's paying like, I don't know, 60 and we're paying 40. And unfortunately we booked a hotel that originally would cost 250 per night. And with that comes such high expectations. I expect you to say, hello, I expect this, I expect this, I expect this. If you don't give that, get ready. And this is what sucks because at least if you pay way cheaper, you know what you're getting. And so you lower your expectations, but that's the thing about expectations. You must always keep them at a very standard because if you have high expectations and they miss the mark by more than 50%, you're going to be so destroyed. And so in saying that, there's so much that goes on in business that you have to understand. But man, I learn a hell of a lot as you do too. So guys, let's continue going with this. Here we go. Let's get to the second part. Track 17. Number 17. Conversation 2. Conversation 2. Hi, Greg. I was talking to Kim, and she thinks the data from the scorecard supports introducing a higher quality premium product. What do you think about that? I agree. I think it's a really good idea. There's lots we can do to improve quality throughout the supply chain. We could source the coffee from higher-end suppliers, and there are lots of different things we could do with the roasting process. So you mean we wouldn't have to change any machines? Not at all. We can just modify the process. At the moment, we're producing to a price. We can change that quite quickly. That's great to hear. Did your analysis show up anything else? Actually, it did. Our levels of waste are extremely high. Hi guys, apologies. I don't know what happened. I'm gonna have to throw some audios together now because for some reason, of course, the either my computer or Zoom sucks. My computer sucks or the Wi-Fi is absolute shit. So if that happens again, it's all good. But nonetheless, I'm going to have to press play again. We're gonna remind it just a little bit, okay? So here we go. Process, we could cut waste by up to 10%. Really? Why do you think we have such a waste problem? Well, I think it's partly some poor processes, but I also think we need to look at our people strategy. I mean, we've got really high staff turnover and newer staff make a lot of mistakes. Oh, OK. So again, I apologize for that. Not sure what happened, but high, higher staff turnover rate. So you see that there's a little bit of a problem with the internal process. See. I'm going to give you another very quick uh, story. I remember oh, one of the most egregious places I've ever worked at was a place called Language Express. They're no longer here, I believe. Um, but there, it was in the heart of Bangkok. And this place, oh, my God. I, I don't know what it was so bad, but I remember walking into the teacher's room and I was like, hey, how long have you been here? Two months, you four months, you four months, you three months. Everybody was new. I looked at the front, I said, how long has everyone been here for? A half a year. And I'm like, why? It goes to show you that something is internally wrong with the company. Now I had to over, and as all of you know, I've had to overcome a lot of things in terms of colorism out here in this country. And I remember walking by some of the classrooms and people looked at me so bad, the Thai students and the Japanese students. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? And I only had like a few, a few private students while I was there. I never really taught a class. And it was because of racial incidences that had occurred. If you look at the majority of the staff and all the staff members, they were all white. White Americans, white British, white this, white that. If you look at all the staff members, they were Thai. And I remember even the Thai staff members, as well as Westminster is another language center out here that is very, very toxic in terms of who they hire and the colorism there. And once you see someone looking at you, you're like, something's wrong here. So looking at the high turnover rate and me quitting an X amount of time after that, and the guy totally understands saying, listen, Arsenio, I totally understand. Uh, I saw the way my students looked at you. 
and he acknowledged that the students were batshit racist. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. But it goes, and, and I still remember the last comment. The CEO of the company said, hey, do you really want Arsenio to teach the TOEIC class? I'm like, bro, didn't you know that I'm like dominating YouTube with TOEIC? And I didn't say that out loud. This was back in 2016, but he, uh, the, one of the teachers said, oh no, it's because you know he's black. The students won't like him because he's black. And I still remember the American. I think he is from Utah. He's like, man, I, he said that to me. I was like, man, fuck that shit, dude. That's what he said to me. He's like the head teacher there. And I was like, hey, listen, you, Josh, Josh was the guy that said that. And Matt, two other, the two Americans there, they were just beautiful, wonderful souls. Loved them uh, because they backed me up in every sense. They were great people. Uh, even some of the teachers there, except the Thai teacher. Oh my gosh, she was one of the angriest individuals I ever met. Young lady too. She's like 25 to 30, but I learned so much from that. And I realized that the internal process, and I, all, I was just talking to my student just now. And I was like, man, does it take a nasty individual to hire a nasty individual? Because she was talking to me about Sentara Grand. It's a hotel out here in Thailand. And the amount of, oh man, you listen, we've all been there at bad workplaces. And boy, I've had my fair share, believe me, out here in Thailand from like 2013 all the way up to 20, whoo, probably 18, you know? Um, hell, it go to 2020. And then after that, I said, no more, I'm working for me. And there it was. But um, God, it takes a nasty individual to hire a nasty individual. It really does. Because I want to ask you guys a question. If you've ever been to a place in terms of customers and from head to toe, you had such an amazing experience, whether it's going to a hotel, like me going to Sofitel or Anantara, it was just, Anantara, not the, the second time, it was actually pretty bad. Uh, the customer service was, but the customer service, once you walk into Sofitel here in Bangkok, they walk you straight over to the front desk. You go to the elevator, you do this, you do this, you do this, you go to luck. Like from head to like from the top. Oh no, not from the top. There's a terrible bar with terrible customer service at the top. But the the hotel itself was just phenomenal from the top to the bottom. That is a beautifully ran hotel with phenomenal management. But if you walk into a hotel, and I remember this was back in 2015 or 16, I remember I walked into this smaller hotel in a place called Ekamai, some more posh area, and this good lady looked at me. She screamed at me, visa, passport, as if she was the police. And I understand you may have had experiences in the past where people of my color, for whatever reason, cappuccino, brought in drugs and there was a raid. I, I doubt it, absolutely doubt it. I'm just saying, but to say that, it goes to show you from top, whoever the CEO of that hotel is, is absolutely abhorrently racist towards people of off color, let's just put it that way, of unfair, <laughs> not fair, but unfair. So it's my experience, it's what I've experienced. And it's very interesting how people are marginalized and put into boxes. So internal processes, people, it's everything, it really is. So looking at turnover rate of different uh, hotels and different places, it shows that something is internally wrong with that company. That's all there is to it. So in saying that, let's get into the final one. Oh my God. Track 17. Let's do it. Let's go. Conversation three. Hi, Antonio. I was just talking to Greg and he mentioned we have some skills gaps. How do you feel about that? Well, I agree. Uh, people don't stay long enough to get the skills and we're having to work hard to bring new people up to speed. So in other words, our turnover is too high. We really need to hold on to people. Why do you think we have such a problem? Well, I think people don't believe they can go anywhere here. I mean, the last three senior appointments have been from outside. People just don't think there are any opportunities here. That's supported by exit interviews. If we can change that and improve career opportunities for the staff, people will stay longer, quality will go up, and that'll see sales rise a lot. OK. Thanks, Antonio. Amazing career opportunities. You, as he was saying this, I was like, why don't people stay here longer? Well, going back to that same job, a uh, language express, 
there was no career opportunity there. We were taught how to teach the most ridiculous way of teaching a language. There was no going up, going down. I still remember the other language center that I was working at at the same time, full time, 2016. That was one of my highest months because, okay, I, you know, did a huge presentation workshop at SEG. I went back to my first province to do another big special project that I paid, got paid a ridiculous amount for. Um, and, you know, uh, there were a couple of other side projects. And then I ended up getting into a conflict with the Australian corporate trainer guy in Bangkok because he wanted me to just put together the entire presentation by myself. And he was just going to go on holiday to Australia. And he just said, oh, yeah, just make sure it's ready by the time I get back. I said, excuse me, that's not how I roll. And that was the end of it. I never did it again. And, you know, going into 2016, especially 2017, when we had a head teacher switch, that's when I realized there was no more opportunity here for me. And I said, oh, man, the growing number of discontent in the repetitive classes with these students who just do not want to learn whatsoever, um, I, my level of discontent grew significantly. And that was it. And that's why turnover is so high. But if you guys just say, oh, Sam, but why are you here at this job? Well, first and foremost, this is, like I said, a visa and a work permit job. That's all I'm here for. Okay, but I have my same level of intent that I bring to all my classes as I do online too. You know, just because they pay me significantly, significantly, significantly less than I get paid throughout my entire business online doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that, that hey, I'm going to quit. This is BS. No, because I get to make my schedule. I work a minimum hours and then I am happy with that. Within the next probably year, two years for sure, I'm going to be switching from this basic visa to another visa, uh, and I'll never work here again because I'll be going on to much bigger things in my life, right? But at the same time, that's why I'm building my skills. I'm building different things outside so that I could get better in specific areas uh, that will help me. You know, it's kind of like the training company right now. The discontent for the training company I've been training at for a while um, has risen significantly and I already made up in my mind that you know I already wrote the email saying hey thank you for your services here's everything here's all the course reports all the best to you in your future endeavors but I've learned so much from it so it's like okay career opportunities well I'm building my entire repertoire <laughs> I'm building my entire reputation right now and the opportunities are continuing to sour right? And becoming licensed as a high performance coach and a transformation coach and all these other things that I'm working towards, that's going to help me a lot more. So this is what I do in terms of advancement. Now, am I, am I advancing here? No, I would actually technically, to be honest with you, I would like some of the companies that actually contact with you here to contact me directly. But anyways, um, Am I getting better? Am I, are there different things that I'm getting better at? So if I look at this learning and growth, what am I learning here at this specific tutorial job here in Bangkok? Nothing whatsoever. Is there anywhere for growth? Absolutely not. Did I get a couple of special projects over the last six months? I did. Did I get a class where this girl was like El Dorado? And that El Dorado is like a big gold mine in terms of, oh, I know her, her, her. And this company, yes, that was huge. I'll never deny an opportunity like that ever again. And I'm so grateful that I had the pleasure of beating her. Um, you know, and so, but at the same time, I'm like, but well, I need to continue getting better. So it's always like, okay, well, this company might come back. This company might come back. I'm like, now I don't like this whole if thing. I'm going to go out there and create and so when it comes to like the, the finance, especially here, nothing, barely anything, you know, but that's okay. I don't expect him to help me with my finances and help me with my future. That's what I'm doing on the outside. And that's why I tell them, no, I'm not free this day, this day, this day, this day, this day, kiss my ass. We have a line. Do not cross my line. You already know that. So how important are these four areas for all of you? And this is what I really wanted to talk about in terms of, you know, having that balanced scorecard that we talked about before, you know? And so, again, with that being said, 
I'm so grateful to actually speak about these specific things, especially uh, with you, because it, may, it just gives you so much perspective in terms of what I've had to obviously overcome in the past, different things and processes that had happened in the past, but also me looking at the, you know, uh, you know, communication and the different things I've had to overcome, especially in this country and throughout, you know, the, the training company uh, I've been training at since last November and can't wait for that to end. Uh, and a couple of other things are going to be coming up soon. You know, it's just me further developing my skills outside. I don't expect this tutorial center to do anything for me because obviously that's not what they're here for. They're a money generator. He generates money for himself. He doesn't care about anything else. And I'm cool with that. I already know in one, two years time, hey, thank you so much. All the best to you, goodbye. And I'm gonna be really, really happy about that, you know? But at the same time, you know, there are so many other things that I have to continue getting better at and stuff like that. So, because to develop my skills, to get those and to have those bigger opportunities to come streamline it in. So, with that being said, people, wow, what a goddamn podcast. Holy Jesus. I'm so happy that you guys tuned into this one again. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you sh uh, share it, like it, rate me on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Yes, you can rate me on Spotify. Follow me on Arsenio ZSL Podcast and stay tuned for another corporate training finance episode. Thank you so much and see you then over and out.